So I wanted to take a few minutes today and address this big monster chicken schooner that Ben built. He did an amazing job. He's a super handy guy to have around and we appreciate all he does to keep everything going around here. And frankly, we've had a lot of questions about it. So I wanna show you guys a few things about it and uh, in case you're raising meat chickens because right now is prime chicken raising time. This is when a lot of you are getting your orders in for broilers and things to raise this summer. Maybe you already are. Maybe you're gonna do it later this year and you're thinking about building a structure to raise them in. So I wanna give you some tips. You can do this on a much smaller scale than we did and it should work for anybody. So the first thing I wanna to say to you guys is don't be scared. Don't be scared of raising broilers and meat chickens and all the things. You'll hear a lot of people say things like, those are not regular chickens. Those are not like my laying hens. Those things are messy and they stink and they eat a lot and they drink and they poop and they're just pooping machines. And while all of those things can be true, they're nothing to be afraid of. So we are raising Cornish crosses in this big monster schooner that Ben has built for a couple reasons. I want to address that first and then we'll get to the schooner. Cornish crosses are raised out anywhere from seven to like nine weeks of age. So it's a short window. It's intense work while it's going on. It's not like it takes us all day every day to take care of these things, but it does take a few minutes every day. So it is a commitment. There's no, no, let's make no bones about it. You're going to be committed and tied down for those seven to nine weeks that you have them. There are heritage breeds you can raise. In fact, we have a flock of buff Orpingtons that we raise as well. And if there's ever a time we can't get Cornish crosses, then we have a backup plan. But for right now, trying to raise enough meat for us and other people as well, Cornish crosses just make the most sense. And let's just be real. They do smell. They smell more than regular laying hens. They're gonna eat more than regular laying hens. You can't show me a laying hen that is gonna be grown out in the amount of time with the amount of large tender meat that these birds have. So that comes with a trade-off and the trade-off, I'm sorry to say, is they do eat and poop a lot and they do have a smell. I would just say keep in mind the end goal and that is healthy meat for your family and so it's all worth it. You're gonna come out of it and yes, it may smell, but it's also fertilizing your land like nothing you can go purchase as far as chemical fertilizers. It is, it's natural fertilize and it is amazing. You're adding carbon and uh, all kinds of good things back into your soil to help your soil recover from all the things that we've done to it over the years. You may hear some hammering and cutting and things in the background. That's because my handy husband is finishing this thing up as we speak. We're tweaking a few things and he is getting it finished up. So I want to show you uh, some of my favorite features on this. And I just want to show you what he did because it's something you can do. And like I said at the beginning, you could scale this way down. So first off, why did we even build this huge monstrosity of a thing and not just go with the Salatin style chicken tractors that you can drag around your field? Well, a couple of reasons. We have built those before. In fact, that's all we've used up to this point. Uh, we took his design, Ben did. He can pretty much take what someone shows him or tells him and build anything. And he took that and tweaked it with what we had on hand or what we could get a hold of. We didn't do it 100% to, to the Joel Salatin specs, but pretty close. Uh, we didn't build ours quite as big. If you go by Joel Salatin's complete designs, you can hold about 75 birds per chicken tractor. Ours would only hold about 50. And let me just say, our Salatin style tractors have worked great, but they only held 50 birds. Or if you build them like you're supposed to, or like he suggested, 75 at best. Uh, now, here's some things. You can move those by yourself somewhat. Um, I'm not convinced that just anyone could move those by themselves. It was a workout, but we did get the job accomplished. But in raising several birds, because if you're a family of four and you want to eat chicken once a week, you're going to need at least one chicken tractor. If you want to go more than once a week or you want to sell some or whatever the case may be, or you want to cut some up and have different cuts of chicken, you're going to need more than one chicken tractor just for one family. So that is where this big thing comes in. This is something that we can hook on. In fact, we've been hooking it onto our truck 
and it takes two people whereas the smaller tractors some days we're taking two people as well by the time we got all of the feeding and watering and moving done and all of that so this really is not taking us any more labor than the small chicken tractors and they're all in one spot and they have grass they're getting lots of room to move around and we have 600 in here right now and we could easily double that if we had had the brooder space to brood more than 600. So let's talk about this thing and how you can build one if you're interested. This is simply a greenhouse frame that we scored off of Facebook Marketplace. Found someone that puts together greenhouses. This one was ordered. I, I don't know all the details, but he didn't wind up using it. We got it at a fantastic price and but it was literally just the frame there was there was not all the pieces and parts and everything to it we have made that ourselves so after we purchased the greenhouse frame and got it home we went to a farm store and purchased this is called drill stem pipe that's down here along the ground these are the runners or skids or whatever that it drags on as well Ben welded some smaller pieces of pipe on there in every section how far apart he wanted these bows which he put these four foot apart we slid the greenhouse bows down on it there's one of these running along both sides of the greenhouse um, and we were in business we put our bows on put them together in the middle and slid them down on here and we had a frame so that was our foundation that's where we began so basically what i'm telling you is if you can get a hold of a carport frame a very small greenhouse frame anything like that you could do this yourself and in fact we looked into just buying one of these they're called prairie schooners you can look them up uh, they become very popular with people raising large amounts of meat birds we built this thing for a minute fraction fraction of the cost that you would pay for one of those and i think those are somewhat affordable for what they are so what i'm telling you is if you're willing to do a little work you can save loads of cash next thing was we braced it because you don't want it to just come apart when you start pulling it around the field so we braced down both sides these poles came with the greenhouse frame. They're part of a greenhouse frame. We just had to buy bolts and nuts. So again, pretty inexpensive. So we braced down both sides and right down the center to pull everything together and kind of lock it in place. All right, next came the ends because the ends are just wide open. We had a greenhouse frame, but nothing on here. So also at a farm store, we bought this inch and a quarter square tubing, and that's what's down along the bottom. That pulled both sides together, and then we used one inch square tubing to build out the end. So that's what's going up and down for bracing, and then that is what he also built the door out of. And it's just simply a square with chicken wire and hinges and these are the same on both ends so you can come and go on both ends of the chicken tractor then we also took some of that same square tubing this is the inch and a quarter again and we put it across the middle to draw the sides together in the middle we don't want this big thing to bust wide open when we start pulling it and then we took another piece of pipe from the top down to that to hold it up off the ground because it's a wide span across there and I'll tell you in just a minute why Ben is out here putting up another one. Then it was time to cover the thing. So if you can picture it, it's just a frame now. All of this is open. Uh, so we came over here with some wood. These are actually decking boards that we purchased just at our local uh, hardware store. Uh, he ripped those in half. They were wider than that, but we didn't need them that wide. And put those all along the side and covered that with chicken wire. That's just uh, two foot of chicken wire up off the ground uh, because when it starts getting hot summertime, we will roll those sides up and so we had to have something there to cover that with. So then it was time to move outside and figure out how we were gonna cover this thing. Now our plan all along has been greenhouse plastic. In fact, we got some ordered and got it here and then we just got to thinking, 
uh, what are we going to do for these things for shade? Because greenhouse plastic in the hot summertime is maybe not quite as bad, but it's kind of just like hot sun beating down on you through that clear plastic. So this is actually a huge silage tarp that we already had from Haas Tools that we were planning to tarp our garden with and probably still will at some point, uh, but it's what we had on hand. It's still cold here, so this was perfect. It gives them some protection. This will get very hot as it heats up in the summer. You can get under there and you can feel the heat radiating off of it. Perfect right now because we still had freezing temperatures last night but as it gets warmer, that's gonna be too hot. So our plan is actually to get another silage tarp that's white on one side and black on the other. And, and of course, face the white side up towards the sun. So this is simply held on here with wiggle wire. There's these channels that you can buy um, and we purchased all of this separately. And then this wiggle wire is what it's called, goes in there and holds that perfectly in place. Um, now, Ben did mention that he feels like he messed up on one part of this. So let me tell you about that. So if you remember when we were inside, this is that board where the chicken wire is down here. That way we can roll these sides up when it gets hot summertime. This is the bottom of the board. You can see the top here. If you're doing this yourself, put this channel on the top of the board. That way there's still some board left down here because they're strapping and things for when you roll the sides up that you're gonna need some board for that to attach to. So we have taken up pretty much all of our board. Our extra is on top, so that's gonna be a problem. So what we're gonna do is when we get the new tarp in and we replace this one, which will be pretty soon, it may not even be on this batch of birds, honestly, because it's still kind of chilly out here sometimes, but even if it is, no matter when it is, we're gonna take this channel loose and we're gonna move it up. It won't be any big deal, but you just learn as you go and you guys can learn from us and not make these same mistakes. So at this point, we have it all covered and next is predator control because you will have predator problems if you don't have these things secure enough. So that is the next thing Ben did. I told you I thought this was pretty genius. He just took some rebar and welded it onto our skids and angled it up. We've got these electric fence holders here and then the wire just goes all the way around. It's touching this plastic in places, but that won't ground it out. That'll be just fine. And it is a layer of protection to keep predators off of these chickens. If you're gonna be near electricity, obviously that you can use any charger you want. If you're not, a solar charger works just great. And then you don't have to worry about electricity. You can just move it around your pastures or wherever and uh, the sun will charge it for you. All right, one last thing I wanna show you and then we're gonna get to what Ben was working on while ago. And I'm sorry for the wind. It's very windy here and it's blowing this plastic around, but these are actually pieces of plastic. We had some comments when I've showed this before that there was a gap here and that was on purpose. Don't try to build your schooner right down flat on the ground. It won't work. You'll never find a level spot in your pasture to park it. And so you'll always have dips and holes and everything. So uh, what we've done is we built it off the ground a few inches on purpose. And then we took, these were the bumpers out of the 18 wheeler trailer we converted to a brooder. And we cut them down to size to where they are longer than the gap is between the metal and the ground. That way they drag. And Ben has got them attached on here. I'll show you these little clips. So you can see these little, I call them C clamps. They attach there and then they go around and they attach on the underside as well. So what that board does is it drags along with the scooter and it's, it's fairly heavy, but with it being longer than the gap, it's not just sitting there, it's dragging. And so that fills that hole in. Now a determined predator could probably dig and push on that and go ahead and get in here, but that's what the hot wire is for. That's what's keeping them deterred. And you have to have a good charger um, that works and that's not grounded out so that when those predators try to get in, it gives them a zap and they don't want to come back. All right, so this is what we were working on today. Another bar that matches the other one. It'll stabilize it, but more importantly, it will give us a place to haul feeders and waterers.
because up to this point, every time we want to move them, I have to carry them all out and not just outside, out to the side, way away so we have room to move it. But now we have some strings with some hooks. If these are empty or almost empty, they can hang and I can put the feeders up on these boards. So this is gonna be so much better. We hung the empty waterers, got the feeders on the board. We've got the waters that still have water in them on the board, more feeders. It's gonna be awesome. So let's show you guys how easy these things move. And like I said, you may see this wall in the background. It's temporary just to keep the wind off of them and them not get chilled. Um, but we'll be taking that down in the next couple days. So first off, I'm gonna use this paddle. This is actually a pig paddle or we use it uh, to get cows to go where we want. It just rattles and they don't like it. So it's worked pretty well so far and I just keep them, as long as they stay run back from this back wall as it's pulling forward, that's all we're looking for. So one thing we're doing to make this a whole lot easier is this company, Retivas is how I'm gonna say it, sent us these walkie-talkies. You guys have mentioned for a long time that our family needs walkie-talkies. These are coming in super handy, moving these chickens, because we can tell each other stop, yes, go some more, whatever we need to say, uh, because somebody's in the schooner while someone's in a vehicle or on the mule or whatever pulling this, and so these are really coming handy. I'm gonna put a link below, they're, they're working great. Uh, they seem like a really well-made walkie-talkie. They're working for us. And you will see us using these working cows because y'all have mentioned that for literally years. So let's get to moving these chickens. Make sure you unhook your hot wire though. You wanna unhook your charger and pull that away so you don't mess that up. I hope that helps you guys. I know we've had several comments and emails and things wanting to know how we built it. So I hope that if it's something you desire to do that that was helpful to you in some way. If we can help you out at all, shoot us an email, vwff at yahoo.com. I'm gonna link those walkie talkies below if y'all are interested in those. They're working really well for us. You can hear really well on them. Uh, they just, they don't have a lot of static and interference on them so I like that part I feel like I'm actually talking to who I want to talk to so I'm gonna link those below for you if we can help you guys out in any way don't hesitate to ask thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one God bless uh, you ready for take three? let's try it again pull the stakes out of the ground this time right Check. head them up and move them out